I always try to keep a pretty conservative demeanor on the court and, and I was always, I guess, um, characteristically, you know, unfazed by a lot of things that happened around me. And that was just my own personal programming because, I, you know, I didn't want to get too, too high over any of the good moments because I didn't want to be, you know, saddened and, and depressed about when things didn't go as I had planned. And, you know, from experiencing both sides of the fence there, uh, you know, that, that just became my public demeanor. And um, I think the first professional game that I ever played uh, still remains to me the, the most exciting moment in my professional career. Uh, you know, I had uh, signed a contract with the American Basketball Association. And, uh, we had gone through an exhibition season and, you know, a lot of uh, speculation had been created uh, about me and my teammates and my team and, and, and uh, you know, what our talent was and, and that, you know, we were an exciting team to watch and we uh, represented something uh, new and exciting in the game of professional basketball because we, you know, we played uh, at a fast pace. We always pushed the ball and there was a lot of room for creativity and excitement. So our game was a lot different than what was being played in the NBA. And, uh, and we featured a lot of slam dunking. Um, and, and I think the first professional game was clearly different from the exhibitions and what had happened in the summer, even, even though I'd been on the basketball court with a lot of professionals. This is when it really counted. You know, this was the beginning of the career. And I remember my first college game as a varsity player, and, and I had an exceptional game. I had a 27 point, 28 rebound game. And, you know, I wasn't a big guy, but I was able to chase rebounds down and set a school record in the, in the uh, first game. And, and I wanted to make a good impression. And, uh, and I knew that rebounding was the strongest part of my game. I said, you know, I might, every shot I take tonight, I might miss. Because, you know, sometimes that happens. And I was, I didn't think that was gonna happen, but I knew that that, that was a possibility. And that was something that if it did happen, uh, I would have to live with it. Um, so I started trying to think of things that, that I definitely had control over and I said, you know, when that ball goes up on the board, you know, nobody's going to pursue it harder than I. And with my jumping ability and quickness and vigor, you know, I mean, I know I can out-rebound everybody on the floor. And, you know, I grabbed 19 rebounds in my first professional game and somehow found a way to score 20 points. <laughs> And, uh, and I felt real good about it. I felt as though that this was, you know, this was the beginning of something good. It was something that you know, I had dreamed about as a kid, uh, something that I didn't think was promised me. And, uh, and I was never sure that it would happen, yet, uh, yet it was happening, yet I was here, and yet it was, it was reality. And, uh, and now it was time to see what, you know, I was made, about, made of. And, and what I was about. And, uh, and it became a real good experience. And, and all the things that followed after, I mean, 16 years of playing and, you know, the playoffs and excitement of championship play and, and uh, frustration of, of getting knocked out and frustration of injuries and pain and, you know, becoming close to teammates and then they get traded. Uh, the transition from, you know, playing with three different teams during 16 years. You know, I mean, all those things, I, I don't think any of those things uh, excited me as much as, as the first game because I, I, once again, kind of programmed myself that, okay, this is, you know, this is a business. And, and then my role models in the business, who were the older guys on my team when I first got there, a guy like Ray Scott, Adrian Smith, uh, Roland Taylor, you know, uh, these were guys who kind of took me under the wing and, um, and, you know, really schooled me in terms of what the business was about and that I always had to, you know, keep in my mind that, you know, I'm here because I do have a, a talent and some aspects of it are unique. And, uh, and you know, I should, I, should, I should keep that in my mind and not just feel that, you know, I'm here because, you know, people just like me and because I'm a nice guy and, and, uh, and, and sometimes I will be treated differently by a lot of people because of you know that talent but you know don't let that uh you know become a distraction 
and uh, and don't be deceived by that. You know, see it for what it is, and and you know then play the handout. And uh, and so 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 much of becoming a good athlete uh, involves you know bringing other things to the table other than physical skills. It it involves uh, intelligence. It involves uh, many of the things that you learn during the process of being educated, um, you know, how to analyze, how to assess, how to you know, equate, uh, how to reason. And, and this is what the whole elementary and secondary and even the college uh, educational process is all about teaching you and preparing you, you know, to be able to deal with what you ultimately have to deal with in life. And even though I was dealing with sports, which many people feel is totally physical and people don't have to think everything is done for you for you and catered you know you're catered to uh i found that to be you know so far removed from the truth that it's it's almost a joke uh and the ones who become stars or superstars are the ones who have a head on their shoulders and know how to use it i think people uh see commitment um probably every team that i've played on i've either been the captain or co-captain and whether it's the coach's appointment or the player's vote, it's generally turned out that way. So there are a lot of uh, athletes who have always been willing to uh, follow my lead. Uh, I think as a youngster, uh, the work ethic uh, was there, uh, practicing hard and, and being dedicated and, and you know, not by nature being a complainer. Um, uh, my teammates have always uh, always related to me in that way and and uh, and I think probably the best compliment I've ever received from a teammate was that you know Henry Bibby told me uh, after we played together for two seasons in Philadelphia that you know he said of all the you know, guys that I've ever played with um, you know I don't know if you if you're the best that I've ever played with uh, but I know you come and play every night and uh, and because of that I feel like you know, we always have a chance of winning. And I thought it was a great compliment, you know, and, and, uh, and thought about that in terms of the other aspects of my life where I need to display leadership. And, and sometimes I have been reluctant because I don't think it should be a, assumed, assumed that because you're a leader in one area that you can lead in all areas. You know, some areas maybe you should be better off following or at least listening and getting your feet wet. And, um, and letting it be a, a process of time. But, uh, but in sports, for the most part, um, I've been given that responsibility and, and accepted it willingly and, and gladly and, and thought that, uh, that it fit.